so very good afternoon one and all very warm welcome to this international webinar on an under faculty development program on new horizons in discovery and development organized by kasega education society rajaram babu college of pharmacy kasega for the all our is sangli and we are very much thankful to our patron the honorable sri adi savant sir secretary kasega education society honorable principal dr rm kurlapkar sir joint secretary kasega education society for providing such facilities for uh, for guiding us we are very much thankful to our principal dr cs magdum sir principal and convener of this program dr sk moite sir very much Yeah. And I'm very, very glad to convey to you that the registrations are more than 200. 200, more than 200 participants are registered for this international conference. Uh, yeah. Out of that, uh, the the uh, the people are there from US, India, 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 like Karnataka, Maharashtra, UP, Rajasthan, MP. थैंक यू डॉक्टर निचवीकर फॉर गिविंग वॉर्म वेलकम टू ऑल द डेलीगेट्स I am delighted to welcome you on the platform of Rajaram Babu College of Pharmacy, Kasigao, which is one of the best institution in Western Maharashtra. Our college has started in 2005 with an intake of 60 students for degree course in pharmacy. Shortly, we upgraded to diploma course in pharmacy. master of pharmaceutical chemistry qa and sutics along with phd program college is affiliated to shiva university kolapur and successful in obtaining permanent affiliation to f and 12p registration from ugc new delhi and we have also accredited to nba for bpharm course i welcome all the delegates and today's speaker dr sharad wakode sir who happens to be alumni from college of pharmacy nashik from where myself dr mohit sir have also been qualified such programs are necessary and at least in today's world wherein we are not capable of obtaining a sure medicine sure cure for diseases such as corona the whole world is suffering from such a such an infection where the peoples are getting stuck up in all the walks of life all the walks of life the governments of all the states nations they have also worried since the medicine is not available for the human being who are suffering from corona infection so i wish all the success for such programs and hope such programs will be useful showing a right path for obtaining any drug number of drugs for the infections which are actually fatal to the human being once again i welcome all the delegates 
and wish all the success. Thank you. Over Thank to you, Dr. Nitevikar, sir. Thank you, Dr. Madhum, sir, for the words of wisdom. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to request our Honorable Vice Principal, Dr. S. Mohte, sir, to introduce the eminent personality, the speaker of today's session. Dr. Mohte, sir, please. Good afternoon, everyone. I am much, very much thankful, Dr. Nitevikar, sir. Today, I am here with all of you. Today, we are going to conduct the international webinar. And today's guest is my best friend, Dr. Sharad Wakode, on behalf of Kasegao Education Society, Rajaram Bapu College of Pharmacy, Kasegao. I am very much thankful, Dr. Sharad Wakode, to introduce. Dr. Wakode is the professor, Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry. That is deep, sir, Delhi Institute of Pharmaceutical Science and Research. He completed BPharm, NDMP, College of Pharmacy, Nasik, MPharm from BITS, that is Birla Institute of Technology, Mishra, that is Ranchi. He awarded PhD in Medicinal Chemistry, Department of Pharmacy from Indore, and presently working in Dipsar. He received the grant. Uh, that is Young Scientist Award Fast Track Scheme from DST. He received 25 lakhs 52 thousand rupees from DST. He is the uh, assigning so many uh, works from various organizations, various uh, group. He is the ex board member, research studies member from Delhi University, expert from Pharmacy uh, Council of India. Expert All India Council for Technical Education, expert for UPSC, expert member for National Board of Examination. He is also member of Secretary IAC and examiner for PhD, MPharm of various universities. And uh, I'm very proud of him. He published a number of publications and presentations in national and international journals, conference in various reputed uh, journals. He delivered so many talks in various national and international conference. Then uh, I am uh, very much thankful to Dr. Sharad Wakode. He is the alumni from uh, NDMP College of Pharmacy. I, I am also from the same college. He awarded, uh, he guided the number of PhD students. Five students are already awarded. Four uh, students are, uh, he is guiding presently. He guided 24 students M farm. And currently, he is also guiding students from young farm. So, uh, this short introduction, I am very much thankful to our, once again Dr. Sharad Wakode. He is with us, uh, going to deliver a good lecture that is New Horizons in Drug Discovery and Development. Thank you, Dr. Wakode. Uh, Dr. Nitrikar, please continue. Now, now, I would like to request Dr. Sharad Wakode, sir, to share his screen. Sure. I request all the delegates to keep muted. Now you are co-host. Oh. Now Dr. Sharad has to unmute himself. Uh, yes, yes. Just a minute, I'm uh, sharing the screen. Yes. Good, 
गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन बगदू का सर माय डियर फ्रेंड मनोज कुमार निजीकर सर एंड डियर ऑल फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एज वेल एज रिसर्च स्कॉलर्स एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम वेरी मच थैंकफुल टू दी इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर giving me an opportunity that is rajaram bappu college of pharmacy kasegao to interact with all of you it's definitely a privilege for me to be there in this webinar and just share my views along with all of you so as uh, dr shrinivas has already mentioned and uh, dr umar sir also mentioned that i am uh, is alumni of the college of pharmacy indian vp college of pharmacy nasik so i belong basically from the maharashtra so mohit sir has already given broad introduction but basically i want to tell you that i am basically from basically. maharashtra and uh, from 2001 i got selected through upsc in delhi here in earlier it was college of pharmacy now it is delhi institute of pharmaceutical science and research earlier we were uh, with the delhi university now uh, delhi government has announced our institute as a university now it will it is now uh, delhi pharmaceutical science and research university so in the present scenario magdum sir kar sir has already sorry has told you that what type of uh, problems we are facing in this present scenario that is covid 19 because of the covid 19 and because of which pharma sector is a very playing very important role in this uh, scenario and we are observing that everybody is looking towards the doctor and the pharma sector pharma industry and ultimately a pharmacist what we people are there so our aim is to provide the safe secure medicines to the all fraternity all the human beings and from that point of view the research activities plays very important role in all the pharmaceutical institutions especially where you people are working okay and that has a great role in this medicinal chemistry drug discovery and drug development process so what we are observing in our day to day life in most of the cases what happens is that whenever pharmacy comes the students generally enter to the first year itself and observe that there are so many subjects along with the um, pharmaceutics ecology cognosy and comes the chemistry part when chemistry part is there so there is always a type of small phobia in most of the students that no 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 uh, we should be away from this chemistry point and no no it is very difficult it is dangerous or something like that so from that point of view all of you must uh, be knowing and we are all of us uh, as a faculty members are knowing that the chemistry is the backbone of all the research development activities which are there in the industry so whenever we are doing uh, any type of research activity in any pharmaceutical institution organization so first thing comes is the chemistry aspect whether the compound or the drug which we have obtained are from the plant origin so once we have extracted it we need to go for identification characterization isolation okay characterization and then pharmacological evaluation so chemistry part is there that what is the characterization which type of functional groups are there which type of um, whether it is aldehydes or ketones or uh, carboxylic acid amino acids alkaloids flavonoids which group is present there so that we need to evaluate and their place a very important role of the pharmaceutical chemist and whether it is from the synthetic uh, chemistry laboratory we are synthesizing any new com- chemicals or we are preparing any pro drugs we are preparing some turn derivatives of certain chemical compounds which are already existence so there the role of chemistry uh, plays very important role now recently yesterday itself the glenmark has uh, launched another compound for the treatment of covid 
okay it was earlier established one but now they have established its new biological activity against covid 19 so earlier same way quinine the chloroquine phosphate okay hydroxychloroquine okay they have identified that it may be having certain important effects so the origin of this hydroxy 6 hydroxychloroquine is again for the cinchona bark basically as a anti malarial drug what we are saying so from the cinchona bark once we have extracted the things we are uh, preparing certain chemical compounds derivatives out of it and finally we come to know that yes six hydroxychloroquine has got this anti malarial effect and they are finding out the effect on this covid 19 also when the other drugs were not available so in that case the uh, use of six hydroxychloroquine was a uh, boon in that case even uh, president trump has also announced that yes he has taken the six hydroxychloroquine but now somewhat safer drugs are getting available making uh, for us so we are coming to uh, remdesivir also launched yesterday by the indian industries also they are many cipla as well as uh, hetero labs they are doing the thing so all these industry people uh, are involved in the research and development processes and in that case the chemistry part uh, whether it is from the natural origin that is natural chemistry synthetic chemistry or analytical chemistry that plays a vital role and all the faculty members as well as students are the important backbone for the future generation as a pharmacist as well as scientist so all of we must acquire this type of uh, recent advances in the field of chemistry which will help us in demonstrating that yes we have built up our base in the chemistry and what are the expectation of the pharmaceutical industry r&d industry is there that we need to fulfill so in present scenario what we have observed that in pharmaceutical industry especially as uh, in case of indian pharmaceutical industry the r&d is based basically uh, on the f&d part they are concentrating on formulation development part because the development of new drug or the discovery of new drug from the synthetic origin or any other thing is very very cost um involved process and long duration process so it is generally what pharmaceutical industry is doing they are doing the what is of patented drugs are there or the or they are purchasing the patent and then they are preparing the formulation part different dosage form they are preparing and uh, producing it to the indian markets so and in the present r&d system very few industries are involved in the basic r&d like dr reddies is, is there uh, lupin is there okhad is there glenmark is there okay. so then shantha biotech is there jubilant life sciences is there so these are the very uh, few astrazeneca was there so these are few industries which are basically involved in the research and development processes from the uh, computer aided drug designing system or synthetic point of view and what we have observed and we are facing is that whenever they recruit the scientist or the uh, bench top chemist in this r&d department especially in the synthetic chemistry lab they will prefer the msc phd people because they study the chemistry from a very strong basics okay and they are having a very keen interest in the basic research and uh, that is why they are preferred as well as another aspect is that they are ready to work with the compromise salaries also and they are sticking to their job at one place or in one industry for a very long period so that may be one another reason why these msc phd people organic chemistry people are preferred but what i am suggesting or what i think is that in uh, this sector we are as a pharmacist in lacking to some extent with the standards of the pharmaceutical industry uh, what is there as per their expectation so as far as this present conditions are uh, concerned so government has also given a clear cut mandate that atmanirbhar bharat that 
we are supposed to prepare our own raw materials chemicals bulk drugs also we need to prepare of our own okay and then formulation development and as well as marketing all these things should be done by our people indian industries basically so um, till now we were mostly dependent on the raw materials from the pharma industry of the china bulk drug manufacturers of china but uh, when i was a student at nasik so there was a huge pharmaceutical industry especially in the amdabad baroda ankleshwar belt as well as hyderabad dr reddy's lupin was very much involved uh, glaxo was very much involved in the manufacturing of the raw materials as well as bulk drugs but the policy of the china industry is that they are dumping simply uh, bulk drugs at a very cheap rate and industry has preferred that and that is why our own industry which was there is not that much capable at present okay so we need to uh, uh, prove ourselves that yes we can also manufacture now also with the same uh, background so we are focusing on the green chemistry aspect that chemical friendly approach in the neurotoxicity management as well as research and drug development process okay. so here we see we'll uh, in short we'll discuss the introduction part elements of neurotoxicity chemical tragedy green synthetic approaches application of green chemistry and use of green chemistry in the chemistry laboratories use of green chemistry in the daily life and future prospects so as far as uh, the natural synthetic strategies are concerned okay so the more in the greener as well as more eco friendly utilization of the elective chemicals that is we should be preferred which will be having less lethal activity that will be less polluted okay otherwise what we are observing that most of the pharmaceutical industry or bulk drug industries produces so much of uh, toxic waste so that should be reduced then uh, especially the chemicals like arsenic lead or toluene what are used in this bulk drug industry are very harmful to the human being and specially causes the neurotoxicity i am focusing here basically neurotoxicity recently we also published an international paper on this neurotoxicity and green chemistry so synthetic substances in the lab or practices or industries field on it as well as in the domestic use also so that causes progression of neuro degenerative disorders like alzheimer's disease so this disease was not much familiar earlier but nowadays we are observing that each and every person above 60 70 they are facing this problem of alzheimer's disease earlier simply we were sim thinking that yes yes no there is loss of memory but they are most of the people above the age of 60 are affected with this alzheimer's disease parkinson's disease okay, and autism als so this type of diseases which were less common earlier nowadays they are more common because we are more getting uh, exposed to this type of chemicals hazardous chemicals neurotoxic chemicals so neurotoxicity can be characterized as a negative effect on the sensory system okay, that is very very important thing and more or all more that 1000 chemicals have been accounted or uh, observed that they may have this neurotoxic effect in the animal studies which are carried out in the laboratories and the most important compounds out of that is the aluminum lead arsenic manganese selenium mercury as well as pesticides so these chemicals are very problem creating chemicals Uh, which can be uh, avoided as far as possible so aluminum is widely used in the chemistry as a amalgam with different metals as a uh, aluminum oxides as well as hydrides as well as in lewis base also we are using it so this aluminum toxicity leads to the increase oxidative stress neurological symptoms 
deposition of tau protein and amyloid beta protein prompting neuronal apoptosis okay and what we have observed that we are using this uh, aluminium as a utensil also household purpose we are using this aluminium as a utensil also and sometimes we have observed that in kitchen what where there is so much chemical reactions taking place on this aluminium utensils or vessels so that may leach out certain type amount of certain quantity of this aluminium and may cause this neurotoxic effect another important uh, chemical which is available in the laboratories is the lead so lead complexes are used in the catalysis reactions uh, as well as the diminished motor functions particularly vasomotor functions are observed in the lead exposed children so they are having some tendency of fighting what that is this simple picture photograph is showing is like that so investigations conducted in the korea as well as venezuela where lead workers where the workers who are in the, involved in the lead industry proposed to have this neuro behavioral deficits lead as encephalopathy being the most dangerous infestation with the symptoms like cerebral pain okay then cognition dysfunction bluntness tremors and memory loss so to that much extent this late may cause problems into the neuro as a neurotoxic agent then comes the arsenic so in pharmaceutical field whenever we are there we are doing this limit test of late limit test of arsenic okay this is the mandatory test as per our indian pharmacopeia and we are observing that this arsenic limit test it is the a semi quantitative test which we people are performing with the help of this arsenic test apparatus because arsenic causes a very high toxicity in small doses also so it may have some uh, deposition pro properties also so this is important chemical which are used in the various chemical reactions and this is a very important compound which may causes the neurotoxicity again okay, which may causes weakness delirium hindered comprehension and encephalopathy then another important chemical which is useful in the chemistry lab is the manganese so manganese based oxides as a catalysts are used in various reactions like catalytic reduction of nitrogen oxide uh, absorption as well as oxidation soot oxidation catalytic combustion then carbon monoxide oxidation so this type of chemical reactions are the reactions where this manganese is used as a chemical component or as a catalyst so this make manganese may cause a parkinson's disease because of this its entry into the brain and it demonstrated neuropsychological deficits okay, that is the major complication then competitive uh comparative examination demonstrated that manganese overburden causes harm to the dopaminergic neurons and created neurological effects like parkinson's disease okay again earlier also we have seen that may cause alzheimer disease and parkinson's here also it may cause parkinson's disease another important compound is your selenium so this selenium is also available in the pharmaceutical industry chemistry labs or specially Uh, selenium disulfide available in the shampoos where anti dandruff shampoos contain this compound selenium okay so specially what happened uh, the selenium is basically we are getting it uh, from basically rock because of the volcanoes okay. this getting erupted out of this volcano and it goes to the soil then through soil it gets entered to the plants plants getting um, animals uses these plants as a food and we are using these animals as a food also so indirectly we are inhaling through the dust also we are inhaling as well as through food also we are taking it to water the rocks the selenium erupted out of this volcano will go to the water reservoirs and through that also we are ingesting it and body we are getting 
uh, loss of motion, muscle limpness, and extreme lethargies like state pursued by death because of the heart attack. So this type of severe adverse effect we may get because of this selenium. Next important compound is your mercury. So another chemical compound which is used in the laboratory, I think in the pharmaceutical chemistry laboratories, uh, in the PG post-graduation purposes only, most of the students are using, or if you are there in the undergraduate and if you are doing the distillation purpose, distillation uh, purpose, in that case, if you want to take the temperature, especially in thermometer pocket, we have to use this mercury pocket for checking the temperature. So there also we are using it in mirrors also, we are using it at home. And we have seen that this type of mercury there, it is having it spreads into small particles and it causes environmental hazards because most of the cases we are observing that uh, broken mirror is there, we simply dust, uh, means pass it on to the dustbin. Do not treat it or do not remove it from the glass or give any specific treatment. And through the environment, it goes to the human being. And that causes uh, neurobehavioral deficiencies like delusion, polyneuropathy, memory loss, hallucinations, hindered comprehension, tremors, and insomnia. Okay. So, in case of especially in early stages of childhood, if they are getting exposed to this mercury, again, pathological conditions are observed, pre-birth exposure prompted brain development. Okay? So it causes influenced ordinary working of the brain. So what we are observing sometimes uh, due to this uh, effect, uh, sometimes through mother, children are getting affected and we are seeing that some uh, mentally retarded children are getting uh, are there and we are blaming that yes there's something wrong is there this is because of the god's grace but we are not uh, we are not taking precautions when the mother is pregnant lady is pregnant whether they are working in uh, in a hazardous industry where this mercury is used in that case so this type of things should be avoided whenever possible so another important thing so we see then uh, these neurotoxic effects are there because of the environmental things okay. then if we uh, see that especially farmers uses these pesticides Okay. They are spraying the things. Now also we are observing that uh, you, during this COVID-19 situation, what we have observed that whenever the uh, sanitizers needs to be used, so people are spraying it through this pesticide uh, pump also, like type of thing. Even some newspapers as well as uh, television news has also reported that just to kill these viruses, COVID-19 viruses, they have tried different type of pesticides on the human beings also. Workers was asked to sit and they are spraying this uh, type of pesticides, so which was very wrong practice. And this uh, represents choline stress especially, and that causes a very severe neurotoxic effect these pesticides are having. And because of that, we are observing that uh, nowadays organic foods, organic uh, uh, type of fertilizers are also uh, available in the market. Speak, uh, the demand of the organic foods or the vegetables grown into the organic farm is very well preferred because that is not having a spray of these pesticides. And if we see the export quality like in uh, your area you are having the grapes or sugar cane or so many good fruits are available and they are exporting through the uh, sea route and if you observe that 
the quality of the grapes or apples oranges which are getting exported is of very high quality and uh, they are also tested before it is uh, loaded into the ship or any con uh, big containers so they are seeing that they not have a uh, more than that permissible limits of these pesticides because foreign countries especially developed countries like usa canada uk okay they won't japan they won't allow the pesticide containing fruits vegetables or any food material so they need the best quality so best quality generally gets exported okay alfalfa mangoes or whatever maybe and the lower quality remains there for all of us here especially so it is our duty to see that for us also we should encourage that this pesticide should be minimized like recently uh, sri sri ravi shankar has also started uh, through the art of living the different they are also uh, means promoting they are asking their devotees to start the organic farming and there is a huge market for this uh, pesticide free food materials so that is the best thing because that will avoid the neurotoxic effect so it is in a very small quantity but causing a very dangerous effect on to the total human being so that is the important thing which is required here so if we see there are certain chemical tragedies all of us are knowing the 1984 chemical disaster which occurred in the bhopal okay so that was the one of the important disaster in india and so many thousand people was killed because of this gas leakage and recently the latest few years a uh, few months before itself during this corona period itself in the south india there was a major gas leakage and that gas leakage has caused severe deaths okay and because of that we should avoid this type of tragedies by seeing the historical aspect in 1994 most momento serene attack was also there in 1995 Tokyo subway serene attack was there it was a terrorist attack serene gas was leaked into the subway that like metro what we have here in india in 1998 also wakanma arsenic incident was there then 1998 nigata sodium azide incident was there in 1998 again nagano cyanide incident is there so we should learn these things that yes in previous years we had a severe accident or some man made mistakes because of which so many people has lost their lives so it should be our prime duty as a pharmacist as well as pharmaceutical chemist especially to see that we are using uh, chemical reactions in the laboratory which will have a uh, uses less hazardous chemicals so here the green chemistry approaches so what is green chemistry it has become an important tool which promotes the safe environmental friendly and sustainable process in chemical laboratories and industries so this green chemistry nowadays is very well adopted in the pharmaceutical industry like our glp gcp okay so nowadays whenever chemistry there is lab is there or research lab is there already set up is there they are basically focusing on uh, to promote or to use maximum green chemicals so what these are so how we can do that by use of green solvents then avoiding derivatization whenever it not needed how we should avoid derivatization use of potent catalyst then minimization of the energy minimization of waste generation this is very very important waste generation aspect that 
causes severe environmental pollution and that is why what we are observing uh, this type of uh, in this covid 19 scenario okay? we have learned that when we are there in the houses or homes the atmosphere has become a very pure especially what we are there in uh, we are observing there in delhi actually we are uh, living like uh, in a type of gas chamber delhi has got a such a pollution level okay so now what we have observed during this lockdown period especially the atmosphere has become a very uh, good in nature the ppm level the particulate matter level has dropped to a significant low level so it was good sometimes but in most of the cases it was above the dangerous level so now this is the situation where we are not moving outside of our houses not using the public transports to maximum extent the environment is getting more and more uh, what we can say that it is human friendly environment friendly we are becoming and that we should follow in future also so minimize waste generation so in most of the big cities they are simply having different different dustbins green dustbin blue dustbin red dustbins and uh, yellow dustbins are there available in the hospitals in bio waste or something for that also but at least recyclable uh, um, waste material should be recycled whenever possible we can start from our home itself okay this is me during this uh, period we have observed that even we have produced least waste material garbage we have reduced to a great extent we are not going to pizza shop pizza hut where all the uh, cardboard boxes are there or uh, the tetra packs are there or other things so that has been minimized to such a great extent that we cannot imagine that yes without we can produce such type of small waste at our home also we have segregated it at home also because uh, the sweepers sanitation staff was also very limited now also they are at a limited uh, extent available because they are busy with the treatment hospitals basically you know so from that point of view if we minimize our waste generation also that will be the best contribution as a corona warrior as well as as a best human being okay so that should be our priority that we should produce minimum waste what's your biodegradable things are there that we can convert it into a compost at our home during in a small pots also flowering pots also gamle mein bhi aap kar sakte hai or if you are having a um, land in that case you can prepare a pit and biodegradable things you can dump it put it some more mud or soil over it within 15 days that will be getting converted to a very good fertilizer itself so that will avoid a creation of huge jungles or type of rocks in delhi what we observed that in all the four zones north east west south zone huge uh, what we can say pahadi type system has been developed because of this garbage outside people ncr people are not allowing to throw this garbage in that area so in delhi itself the himalayan type of mountains has been developed because of this garbage or waste material and every time there is some explosion or something some fire incidents are taking place in that place and because of that same during the rainy season again rain comes through that whatsoever bio, non biodegradable material is there or non leachable material is there that is going through drains through to our water system water body is getting polluted so that should be the important aspect where we can focus and help our planet to become more green so there are 12 principles of the green chemistry okay so this was uh, suggested by paul antas from the us scientist so there basically uh, 
concentrating on the waste prevention. You should prevent the formation of waste. Then, atom economy. You should minimize the chemical use of chemicals. Less hazardous synthesis. So, whenever synthetic route is not available, then less hazardous chemicals should be utilized for the synthesis purpose. Then, safe chemical designs. Designs should be with a safe chemical. Then, begin solvents and auxiliaries. Beginning solvents. So, green solvents should be utilized to the energy efficiency. So, whenever possible, solar energy, wind energy that can be utilized. Renewable feedstocks preferably can be utilized. Reduced use of derivatization preferably in the labs. Catalysis is the important aspect designed for, for the degradation. So whatever chemical is available that should be bio, uh, degraded into such a way that it will be biodegradable or it will not cause uh, any end product or by product which are harmful to the community. Then real time analysis is very equally important. Then inherently safe chemistry should be followed in this case. So there are they have given what are these 12 principles which is uh, summarized here. So many good research articles are available. Uh, on this green chemistry. Okay. Then what sir, solvents are useful. Preferably we can use a solvent which are free from the uh, hazardous uh, type of chemicals. So whenever possible, edible oils can be utilized instead of uh, uh, highly carcinogenic solvents, especially. Okay. So then another aqueous reactions can be preferred whenever possible. Water can be there whenever possible. And whenever there another condition is there, the solvent free conditions also there are certain reactions chemicals reactions which can be taken place without the use of uh, this type of chemicals so which may be economical also and has got a very uh, good reaction as well as eco friendly so these chemicals this such type of chemicals are also available but we should look for it then one pot green synthesis is the another technique where we can minimize the use of organic solvents, especially toxic, neurotoxic organic solvents can be minimized by use of this green pot synthesis. Okay. Uh, especially where we are using ethanol, which is not much toxic. Okay. Then uh, one more important aspect is the our use of microwave assisted synthesis, okay. microwave synthesizers. So in the uh, household also, we are having this microwave. So which that uh, these microwaves we are utilizing to reduce the timing for heating, especially in households or in uh, hotels or cafeteria, we are observing that simple burger, they are heating it immediately by keeping it into this microwave or any other snacks there simply keeping it, okay? So for a very small period, may not have that much effect, but longer run, that may have some effect. It is not very much clear, especially in case of food material. So whenever possible, we should minimize it for the household purpose, but in the chemistry lab, can be a very effective thing, microwave synthesis, because in the chemistry lab, what we observe that in chemistry, reactions are there, for four hour reactions, reflux is there. Eight hour reflux in those who are doing PhD or completed PhD, they must be knowing that they have to reflux it for 24 hours also continuously sometime till they get a final product. So that time can be reduced with this uh, help of micro synthesizer. So CEM, okay, CEM is the one of the important company which produces this micro synthesizer. 
okay, which has a very small tubes type of test tube type of systems where we can add a solid component compounds over there, okay, and just pass it on, place it into that micro synthesizer, uh, set the temperature condition, set the pressure, okay, inert atmosphere if you want, that can be also adjusted. And the reaction which takes place in six hours or eight hours that can be carried out uh, in a, about maximum 10 minutes or 15 minutes in this type of micro synthesizer. So that will be the great advantage for the research scholars. They use this micro synthesizer, although it is a somewhat costly technology, but the alternatives has been also developed or prepared, manufactured by some Puna based agencies because CEM product is more than 15 lakh rupees. We are having very few research in the institutions are uh, having this thing. But even the maintenance cost is also very high. So we can prefer in a, a simple micro synthesizer, which are developed by the Puna based industries or something like that. The normal household micro synthesizer is not advisable for the synthetic chemistry research. Okay, that may cause serious accidents so this use of micro synthesizer is a very good option for reducing the neurotoxicity especially the chemistry okay. so this uh, application there are so much applications are there this for this chemistry gene chemistry the computer chips, manufacturing of computer chips, we are, what we are observing that uh, the different metals are useful. So the environmental friendly green chemicals can be used here in the preparation of the computer chips. Then in the research or practice, especially in the industry, as well as in the academia, whenever possible, we can use the less hazardous type of chemicals whenever possible. Then in the synthesis or preparation of any medicines, this green chemistry principles can be followed to reduce the cost as well as to reduce the adverse effects uh, associated with this uh, hazardous chemistry points especially. In this natural work also, this Biodegradable plastics, also this uh, normal green chemistry can be of great importance in paints also because paints also causes uh, too much adverse effect because of the lead content over there. Okay? So green, if you follow the green chemistry aspect, that will also be utilized properly and we can reduce the harms or hazards to the uh, workers which are used in this paint and varnish industry especially. The cleaning of the turbid water for that purpose also, the green chemistry aspects can be utilized. So what you can see here, there are certain green uh, alternatives to this hazardous chemical, especially like dry ice or acetone, which is very widely used in the pharmaceutical chemistry practicals, organic chemistry practical. So that can be replaced with the uh, dry ice as such or isopropanol. Then hexane, which is toxic one, so we can better use heptane or pentane. Okay, so in place of tetrahydrofuron, methyl tetrahydrofuron can be better option. Okay. Then metachlorobenzoic acid and tin hydride. So instead of that, if we follow or practice this electrochemistry, that can be very useful avoiding this toxic effect. Then in metal catalyst, okay, instead of metal catalyst, if we use the light, okay, that can be a very good, uh, it will serve a purpose very nicely. Okay. So in the day-to-day uh, -day life also, we are using the, uh, this dry cleaning mixture. So presently, what we are using is the perchloroethylene is the main component which is used in the dry cleaning industry. And this is very, very uh, dangerous chemical which may cause cancer. Okay? So instead of that, we can use liquid carbon dioxide, a substance that is essentially non-toxic, 
and is equally effective for removing the grease and dirt from the fabric. So that will be the best idea to avoid the exposure of this carcinogenic or cancer-causing agent in the dry cleaning industry. In the solar array, especially in the solar cells. Okay. So here also we can reduce the consumption of the fossil fuels by reducing the pollution and greenhouse gases emission. Okay. So we can use solar cells instead of other energy source. Then, uh, sorry. then reusable water bottles. Avoid simple okay, invention that can be uh, considered green, the reusable water bottles. So nowadays, uh, Pradhan Mantri Ji has also mentioned that plastic should be avoided or single use plastic should be avoided. So in most of the government organization also there, it has been observed we are observing in the meetings and other things in television, Durdarshan, that they are using the glass bottles, amber colored or some different colored glass bottles or metallic bottles they are using instead of the normal re, uh, waste bottle, simple packs, which can be through, which need to be thrown away once it has been used. Okay. So in this way, in day-to-day -day life also, we can utilize the green chemistry concepts. So green, for the future prospects, what I already uh, mentioned you, that green chemistry includes the redesigning of the chemical products that diminishes or eliminates the use of toxic substances. Okay. Then uh, for uh, restoring the normal environment, clean environment, we should follow the green chemistry. We should focus, researchers should focus on the utilization of green chemistry as an important tool. Okay, they should see that it is a basic part of the chemistry. Whenever we are doing chemistry, we should try to follow whenever possible green chemistry aspect it's to minimize a minimal or no use of toxic solvents. So whenever possible, uh, the water or water-based, ethanol-based reactions can be carried out reduce this toxic effect. Then utilization of microwaves that decreases the reaction time period. Okay. So that can be also useful. The concepts of reusable, recycling, minimization of chemical help to join the green science industry, laboratories and other research centers. So it is uh, highly expected that we should reduce the chemical burden on the environment. Okay. So what we are observing recently, the Tadak scientist, the three idiot, uh, is motivated because of that scientist. He has also created a huge artificial icebergs into that Ladakh area. He has got its own school, okay, which works on this environmental friendly uh, type of systems. Okay, so he is also suggesting, and recently he has suggested no to China apps, no to the China technology preferably. So that is very much desirable at this moment. As a student, as a teachers, it is our moral duty to protect our planet. And from that point of view, all the researchers, teachers should take initiative in starting the green chemistry aspect into their normal day-to-day -day life. Okay, as well as in the, especially in the laboratories, uh, we should try to utilize the green chemicals, use, try to use the micro synthesizer. Okay, and whenever reactions are there, so it is given in the Vogel book or any other practical chemistry book. Take 25 gram of this, add 25 gram of this, uh, 10 gram of this and produce the product. So certain what happens in most of some of the institutions, they follow the same procedure, okay? In a group or something like that, but that is not desirable. So we can calculate the mole to mole ratio of that particular chemical. So first of all, we should try to see that whether it is uh, green chemistry or not. 
if it is not from the green chemistry you should reduce the quantity of the substances from the mole to mole ratio basis okay accurately and then ask the students to uh, complete the work in the small group not bigger group because they will not learn also if we go for a bigger group of 10 students 15 students so only one or two students will take part into that actual practical and others will simply sit into the laboratory so that should not be there then once we are decided yes we need to use this this type of chemicals for this practical we should ask the students especially to go through the library or go to the uh, google okay wikipedia see that particular chemical how to handle it even the bottle has got a labeling condition but that will give you small warnings but what will be its adverse effect how we should uh, use that how to protect that how to protect ourselves how to protect from the exposure to this type of severe hazardous or uh, carcinogenic agents so that should be taught by the teacher it is our moral duty that yes before starting any practical next time if we are doing synthesis of this paracetamol yes we should know that what are the starting material in the one week earlier itself we should assign the students yes go through these chemicals what are these properties how we should go ahead okay how to weigh it how to handle it whether we should use a normal stainless steel spatula or plastic spoon or metal spoon should be avoided so that way iodine if we are using how we should do it in the glass pestle motor we should use it not in normal pestle motor okay the plastic spoon is expected so that will create uh, interest of the students also yes we have been asked to search for this type of thing so that is the good advantage uh, i can say that we are uh, fortunate to have a great teacher like professor vk moure sir so he used to take our practicals for the parentals so uh, in the final year become so i work in the wokhart for production also so i i can guarantee that uh, the practices which followed in college of pharmacy that sterile room area or aseptic area okay especially by us all of us uh, in the supervision of uh, moure sir okay that was very much better practices which we have followed in the wokhart also so that was a very small uh, area that was a good thing that definitely but the way the concept one teachers teaches to students are the best thing and students will remember it throughout its life that yes whenever he goes to the pg labs to other institution from diploma to degree to other institution from degree to masters in other institution that they will reflect your image of your institution yes these students have learned something these students are having some basic idea okay otherwise what we have observed uh, the students which are coming from uh, so many msc uh, colleges so when they go to the cdri or ncl okay or here uh, in tifr or so many uh, csir lab specially or in our institution if they are coming as a research fellow it is observed that their basic concepts are not good they are not good in the purification of the product they are not good in the recrystallization okay they are not good in the column they are not good in the distillation reflux how to do that they are not good in that so if you are uh, taking your student to the lab with proper precautions and giving them this type of tips then they will have less problem in this r and d labs especially csr labs or other where they are doing their master project or phd project especially those who are doing phd who want to register for the phd in the csr labs or in government lab they have been asked to go for one year training on the technique itself so that is why cdr people to require minimum 4 to 5 years to complete their phd because most of the msc people don't know these basic techniques what we are studying here in the b farm level also so that way we are good enough so they will consider they have to justify that yes we have learned the thing we know this thick techniques so that is what my suggestion to all the teachers that uh, ask your student to follow the good reference books google is there man and saunders is there and so many other uh, good teachers has also created uh, practical pharmaceutical chemistry books or any other chemistry book okay they should follow the thing they should see the concept they should go to the details also 
for literature also in projects, especially MPAM projects, they should uh, know that SciFinder is there, which will give you the alternate mechanism, alternate way also to synthesize the thing, how to avoid that particular chemicals. Okay? Sometimes it is observed that uh, because of one chemical, the reaction is getting stuck off. Student is not able to start his project, MPA project or PhD project because one chemical is not available. So through the sci finder, he can search the alternate chemical also. So or green chemicals also he can. What is the green chemical substitute that can be also uh, taken care by this sci finder software, which is somewhat costly one, but in the uh, government labs or nearby IITs or NITs that may be available. So that student should go. Uh, teachers should ask their students to go through this, which is very easy nowadays, SciFinder. Otherwise, at our PG level or PhD level, we used to go to uh, this chemical abstract to a very vast extent and which was very Herculean task. Okay, So I hand over my uh, desktop to my host. And once again, thanks to Abdumwar sir, Mohite sir, Zetlikar sir, and all the faculty members of the institute and all the participants for patiently listening. I'm observing that so many, my old students are also there in this meeting who have joined here. And so many people whom I know at least by name from the Maharashtra and so many other areas, regions. Okay, Vithal is there, Sanjay Mishra ji is there, the Adesar is there. Okay. So, so it was very nice to be there with all of you. I wish all the best to all the participants. If you have any question, you can ask uh, through the host. If they must have sent some queries or something like that. That can be done here. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. It was really an enriching session and you have precisely highlighted the need of uh, green chemistry. Now I invite all the participants to ask their questions in the chat box. Meanwhile, I take a question that was asked on the YouTube comment box. Sri Shivkan Shukla has asked, Sir, Dr. Sir, am I audible to you? I'll take one minute break. Huh? I will take one minute break. Uh, one urgent call is there from my vice chancellor. So one minute break, I'll take. Uh, yes, uh, okay, sir. Okay, I, can, sir. I can hear. Yes, yes, no problem. Yes, sir, till then participants can raise their questions in chat box. Yes, yes. Uh, I invite all the participants, if you have any queries, please drop them in the chat box while the speaker comes back. Ah, please. I'm extremely sorry. No, no, no problem. Uh, there is a question. Uh, am I audible to you, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there is a question from Sri Shukran Shukla. What is the what is the main obstacle in COVID vaccine discovery in your opinion? Uh, COVID vaccine? Yes, yes. He seeks your opinion about obstacle in the COVID uh, vaccine dis uh, discovery. Obstacles. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, uh, as all of your opinion about that. Hello, I'm audible. Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. You are as all of us are knowing that it is virus. So, virus is the uh, has its own properties that it change its structures very frequently. And that is why uh, the strains which are observed here 
in uh, India are also varies from the strains which are observed in the Wuhan, which was there in the Italy, and which is there, especially in the US. Okay, even the species which was available in the Ahmedabad earlier, that was slightly different than the species available in Delhi or Mumbai. Okay, so depending on that, the they are changing the structures very fast. It stated especially that a clear term which if we use it, and because of that, it becomes very difficult uh, to manufacture the vaccines for this type of viruses. But there are so many good organizations or uh, good industry, pharmaceutical industry, which are uh, in a very highly progressive stages for this uh, vaccine. But main thing is that drug discovery processes the clinical trials is the most important thing which we cannot skip and that will be a very uh, type of hazardous thing if we skip that stages but then also especially in this case of uh, covid 19 especially for the any drugs which is related to covid 19 any vaccine related thing or kit related thing the dcgi is uh, very active very active during day and night, 24 hour, they are approving the things at a very fast speed. But by checking all the formalities, what codal formalities, they need to do it. And then also uh, the clinical trials phases are there, phase one, phase two, phase three. So it needs minimum one year type of period for uh, development of these vaccines. But that also they are, they are reducing to great extent throughout the world and uh, very fast not before I think November, December, we may have vaccine. Any other participant? Thank you very much, sir. There is one more question from Sri Shailendra Surya Onshi. How can we use green solvents in chromatographic methods? Yeah, chromatography also here we have to saturate the chambers and other things. So, or specially separation point of view, if we utilize this normal column, okay, what uh, traditional column is there, we need to fill liters of organic solvents in that. So that can be a very cumbersome process, costly also, uh, as far as solvents are con concerned, and uh, not only costly, but health hazards will be a more problematic thing with this uh, based simple column chromatography. Okay, so in that case, for the separation purpose, we can go ahead with the uh, combi flash. New technology is there, combi flash, where pressurized column chromatography is there. So some uh, good organizations uh, or the very good pharmaceutical institutions are having this combi flash system by Septic Lab. We are also having this combi flash. So you can tie up. With, uh, for these projects and where they are using this combi flash, there we can send your samples and get the separation done. So that will reduce the quantity of solvent and very fast speed without much more exposure. So there everything is closed contact. Okay, and solvents also getting eluted with different different fractions, and that even fraction itself are uh, sub, uh, subjected to the UV light and where a particular peak is we are getting that particular fractions they can collect it into specific portions and then we can concentrate it okay so even concentrator a bushy type of rotary operator should be preferably used uh, in open we should not concentrate it especially those who are working in the herbal chemistry part so they should minimize their exposure uh, with the help of these green solvents or this newer techniques like uh, separation purpose, combi flash is the important thing. Even uh, one more thing I can uh, suggest is that uh, for sep not only for separation, but before separation extraction process is also there. So recently, one more SFE, super critical fluid extractor technique is there, where we are using the compressed carbon dioxide gas itself 
okay through that co2 itself we can take out the active constituents out of that particular herbal drugs or crude drugs so it will be in a very small quantity although so we are having that uh, instrument sfe iit delhi is also having uh, pune also college of pharmacy bharti vidyapeeth have seen that so some good institution they are having sfe so that is about 15 to 16 lakh rupees instrument is there but you will get a very pure component without use of any organic solvent okay with the help of carbon dioxide itself you can extract out the important chemical constituents out of that plant material so that is again a part of green chemistry yeah okay thank you very much sir Welcome. now I, i i call upon dr nindelkar sir to please proceed further Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sharad Vakode, sir. You have answered uh, your, every question. Now I would like to request. Most welcome. Uh, I would like to request Dr. Indrani Raut, ma'am, to start screen sharing to uh, to hand over the certificate to the eminent speaker, and I request Dr. Shina Moite, sir, to uh, start his video so that we will hand over the certificate to the speaker. Dr. Shina Moite, sir. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Mohit sir. I am highly obliged, Dr. Mohit sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Now we are handing over the certificate to the eminent speaker, Dr. Sharad Vakode sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. It's so good. Now, It was very nice. Now let us start to the. last session of the session the last session of the talk i would like to request professor pankaj kore to express vote of thanks pankaj pankaj ha uh, yes sir please please, please proceed uh, very much thank you dr nitlikar sir for giving me this uh, opportunity so it's my great pleasure to introduce this today's vote of thanks of uh, international fdp on new horizons in drug discovery and development organized by ajrambakku college of pharmacy kasigao and we are having such a uh, great uh, em emergency person with us that is dr sharad van kode sir Uh, on, he has delivered his uh, session on the topic green chemistry of a chemical friendly approach in neurotoxicity management uh, uh, sir it is very uh, very wonderful session uh, as you have covered all the points uh, which will be uh, beneficiary to all the researchers uh, research scholars and all the faculty members uh, in future uh, related to this uh, chemistry Uh, you have covered this 12 principles of green chemistry one point green synthesis microbial assisted green synthesis application of green chemistry as well as future prospects of green chemistry so i am very much thankful from our team of rajaram bapu college of pharmacy kasigao uh, i also thanks to uh, our secretary honorable rd savan sir joint secretary dr rajendra kurapat sir they always motivate us and support us uh, to conduct such uh, different activities i am also thankful to our beloved principal dr cs mogdum sir uh, vice principal dr sk mohit sir they are, they are giving us this opportunity uh, frequently uh, to conduct such a sessions as as this is a lockdown session then also our college is conducting various activities and our these two pillars that is principal and vice principal they always boost us to conduct this uh, conduct such types of activities i am very thankful to dr manoj kumar mukhlikar sir for organizing such an uh, wonderful session to all of us uh, also thanks to all the team coordinators for today's session uh, of rcp kasega and very huge uh, thank for all the participants from various universities uh, various institutes uh, to participate in this session and uh, gracing this uh, session very wonderful and memories of this session thank you thank you for all for one and all thank you sir so now today's session is over i request all the delegates to be to uh, to, to to get login at uh, 345
tomorrow the speaker is dr sanjay kumar uh, sorry dr dr sudhakar garal sir who is the global head of novartis from usa he will be delivering his session on bioavailability improvement of for poorly soluble molecules so thank you very much Th thank you and stay tuned stay with us stay home, stay safe stay at home thank you very much thank you